Welcome back, everyone, to theCUBE's live coverage here in the broadcast booth. They're closing the, the area down. We're going to get this last interview in. Day two of three days of coverage. 13th year covering VMware's conference. VMworld now, VMware Explorer in its second year. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante, Lisa Martin, Rob Stretch, the whole team is here. It's team coverage, SiliconANGLE writers are here. Everybody's here, our research team, writers, media. And back at the ranch, we have the Cube Cloud pumping out more clips uh, than, than, you could, than you could watch. So check out siliconangle.com and thecube.net and check out Twitter, tons of stuff flowing there. For this next closing interview of the day, we're going to have an AI conversation with an expert from Lenovo, Robert Daigle, the director of global AI leader Lenovo, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here at VMware Explore and to be here on theCUBE with you talking about my favorite subject, which is artificial intelligence. Well, we're like an artificial fan club here, so we love it. Just everyone knows we're bullish on AI. We've been doing a lot of it. But everyone is asking the questions, how do I get to the Gen AI app construct? On the keynote on day one, they showed the landscape of enterprise apps. There's clear line of sight into, into new opportunities to innovate. And then you got the top-down boardroom saying, go take that hill, inject AI into everything. And then the bottoms up, developer community going crazy on open source, a lot of open source greatness happening. But then it gets stuck in this compliance, legal thing going on. So there's a lot of dynamics going on with AI right now. It, it's a very complex world right now. Um, you know, one of the things that we've done, you know, at Lenovo is we actually stood up because we're doing, we're eat, eating our own dog food, drinking our own Kool-Aid, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we're actually consuming this internally. I've got over 17 generative AI projects ongoing internally at Lenovo uh, that we're overseeing as well. And one of the things that we did is we launched a responsible AI committee to review all of the things that we're doing uh, that touch artificial intelligence. So it's a really, uh, really important topic. You want legal compliance. You want to do things the right way. Um, and this whole idea about privacy with generative AI I think is really, really important. And that's why we're seeing a lot of it being deployed uh, on-prem and a lot of interest on running generative AI models on-prem. How, how has your thinking around infrastructure changed as a result of, you know, sort of the AI heard around the world? I know you were working on AI before, but now there's just so much buzz and so much vision. Has it changed the way in which Lenovo's thinking about infrastructure? Absolutely, absolutely. We have, uh, we've been working on uh, artificial intelligence systems for um, a number of years now. I've been with Lenovo for six years now. Um, and when we launched our AI strategy, so we've been building uh, AI, purpose-built AI systems from that point on, I've been working in artificial intelligence systems uh, for about a decade now. Um, and it's, it's becoming so, so critical uh, to focus on the performance of the infrastructure. It really matters now, especially when you're getting into really large model sizes that, that require a lot of compute performance. Uh, the compute matters more now than ever uh, with artificial intelligence. So what about, this move toward, everybody talks about it, training versus inference. How are you guys thinking about that and what does it mean for your, your customers and your business? Absolutely, so you know, inference is going to be about four times the market size of training long tail. Yes, so totally agree it's with that. a huge That's market. <laughs> the, the really great thing about it is the, the, the inference uh, models that we're seeing run really well on PCIe accelerators, right? So you can take you know, GPUs and common general purpose systems and get started with inference today. You don't need bespoke custom uh, uh, infrastructure to start deploying inference models today. And that's really great news for industries that are looking at and companies that are looking at adopting generative AI. They can get started deploying inference models today and start seeing value from it without having to train up their own bespoke foundation model. We just wrote a piece, um, and we used some data from our, our partners, ETR, and it showed, I was just showing it to you, it like literally a 50-50 split between customers saying we're going to run on private infrastructure and we're going to run on public infrastructure. Now, the cloud vendors, they have the advantage of speed and they've been at it for a while, you know, AWS, Sage, make it, but the legal compliance issues, like it's, it's, they call it FUD, but it's real fear, it's uncertainty, real. It's and doubt. It's definitely slowing and down. So it's legit, right? So that's the advantage. How do you see, uh, uh, what's your strategy to be able to, with your partners and ecosystem, keep pace, enough pace, stay close enough in range with the cloud acceleration in order to take advantage of that inherent value that you bring with regard to legal compliance, et cetera. Absolutely, the legal compliance is a real concern. I mean, we've seen the headlines 
right? With uh, developers leaking proprietary code. Yeah. Um, yeah. Lawyers. Yeah, and it's <laughs> in, and there's a case right now on generative AI content. That's going to have huge implications if it goes up to the Supreme Court. So the legal concerns are real. Running it on-prem at least gives you a lot of control over what goes into those foundation models and what comes out of it, and that you own it. You, at least it's you know, within your control. Um, you know, really, I think the innovation here is happening in the open source community. If you look at mm -hmm. some of the new models, like what Facebook has done with uh, Llama um, 2, right? Uh, it's very powerful. Uh, model and that is, uh, you know, licensed in, in, in a way that is open source and commercially viable. There's over 20 models that are commercial, uh, open source, commercially licensed models that you can use in your data center today. Well, it's funny. I mean, you know, in the hardware business, it's <laughs> always cycles, right? You know, yeah. we all know this well. It's like, oh, who's got the the latest chip and who can put in the Intel thing, the who can get the market faster? And it's usually, you know, maybe six month leapfrog cycles. Now it's like with these these foundation models, it's like every week. It's week. There's it's a every leapfrog. Two weeks, there's yeah, a new. Insane. A new. <laughs> hey, yeah, I just I was reading and and the speed that it's coming from research from a research paper into like something that we can use is happening yeah. in in matters of weeks and months, not years, uh, like what we used to experience. And so I read a recent paper that was fine tuning an alpaca model and some of the optimization that's been done uh, on bringing those models down into smaller, smaller compute footprint. I think that's another paradigm that we, we can anticipate uh, these models are going to get more and more efficient, mm. right? And yeah. so that means we're going to be able to pack more, really powerful, really large, large language models into smaller and smaller compute. Rob, I saw the Flynn Malloy on text, and he couldn't make it. We're trying to get a beat with him. He's, we know from his HP days. He said ISG's growing really fast. You guys are doing really well. And NVIDIA's obviously earnings were spectacular today. Everyone knows what they're doing there on stage here. You know, I remember interviewing NVIDIA years ago, David, 2015, and they're like, we're not a hardware company, we're a software company. Yeah. Their software stack dominates their, their performance today. Yeah, they got gear, they got software. That's the model, everyone sees that. Hardware is still relevant, everyone wants gear, but it's a software. Can you share with our audience what you guys are doing right now? Where's that growth coming from? How are you viewing software? Because the AI gift is probably going to power more growth for Lenovo. What do you, what's your story now? What's the current positioning? What's going on? Absolutely, I mean, software is critical uh, when you're thinking about artificial intelligence. One of the things that we've seen the is you have really two uh, options out there. You have open source software tools uh, that are you know, widely available. Uh, we talked about some of the open source uh, options that you have uh, when you're talking about large language models. The other thing that we're seeing is really a lot of investment in the startup community and really great IP coming from startup. So our strategy is partner where there's great IP, where there's great software technology, yeah. we're going to be partner led and we want to harness the startup community and all the VC dollars that are pouring into it. So we launched something called Lenovo AI Innovators. We have over 45 AI software companies already onboarded that are doing everything from retail, uh, store, uh, you know, um, uh, computer vision solutions to yep. manufacturing. Uh, these are vertically specific solutions uh, and that we can deploy full stack. So we validate these software solutions on our Lenovo infrastructure and can deploy a full stack solution for these specific verticals. So it's really powerful. Software is critical, um, it, but the infrastructure is still really important too. I mean, you have to have purpose-built AI infrastructure and Lenovo is now the third largest infrastructure provider for AI uh, infrastructure today, so yeah. I, it's really, really critical uh, a part of the equation as well. Well, we're looking forward to touch. We're getting the, the hook here. Before we go, the last minute we got. Um, thanks for coming on, by the way. I appreciate getting this last one in. Uh, just take the last minute to explain why you guys are winning customers. Where's the growth coming from? What's the pitch? Yeah. So it's, it's you know, we, what we're trying to do is democratize artificial intelligence for industries and companies of all sizes. Uh, we're doing that uh, by leaning into the startup community through our Lenovo AI Innovators Program, bringing full stack solutions for industries. We have our AI Discover Lab, so if customers need more help uh, than, than what they can get from just a software solution, if they need hands-on support, we use our AI labs for that. Uh, what we're really excited about and the things that we're able to do uh, with that is we've been able to uh, very quickly respond to these market trends. Like we're talking yeah. generative AI, you know, you heard about it on stage in the keynote. We're, we already have a reference architecture in market to, 
that's def that's actually showing you how to do what they talked about in the keynote yesterday. <laughs> we have yeah. a we have a reference architecture in market, and we actually are actually showing a full stack demo in our yeah. booth uh, to show you how you can actually use a generative AI model based on that reference architecture. Uh, so it's just about being able to respond quickly uh, to these new uh, paradigms in the industry. And that'll become a solution, you know, potentially a skew. Absolutely. Or, yeah, all, right. Yeah. all right. Hurry up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody's over your shoulder. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Well, great to have you on. Obviously, we're doing some great research in AI. We're plugging it in there. We recognize what you guys are doing. A lot more to the Lenovo story we're going to have to unpack, so we're, we're going to have to follow up and get the briefings. Love that. Love the tailwind, how AI can really change the landscape. Thanks for coming on, Absolutely. Robert. Thank you so much for yeah, having me. Appreciate it. Okay, that's a wrap on day two. We're getting every, every ounce of Cube data we can get to you. This is the Cube's what we do. We get the content, we get it out there, and we'll let AI take care of the rest. Squeezing I'm John the Curry lemon. With Dave Vellante. You can squeeze every piece of data out of that juice. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Day three, we'll be right back. <laughs>